Hey, we continue our conversation with Dr. Jack Newman, Canadian pediatrician and world-known expert in the topic of breastfeeding. And in this second video, Jack is going to cover very practical questions. How do you know that you have enough milk? What is about sleep and night uh, breastfeeding? When is a good time to introduce solids and win the baby? So I hope you will like this video and it will be useful. Please like it and subscribe to our channel. And now to Jack. So what are the leading causes of not enough milk? And so how there... to, yes, I'm Go sorry. Ahead. How to understand that the baby is not getting enough milk, not just um, if we don't only focus on weight of the baby at home before going to see your doctor and what it's we can do. So, so the first thing is to watch the baby at the breast. And I think that this is the number one way is the baby drinking at the breast or not drinking at the breast or something in between. So as I said, we have videos on our website that show this. I sent it to you, uh, Ekaterina. Uh, and uh, those videos basically show a baby who's drinking beautifully at the breast. And how do you know this baby's drinking beautifully? Because when the baby is drinking beautifully, you see the baby drinking like this, pause, pause, pause. And then when the baby is not drinking at all, like the second video, it is doing nibble, 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 nibble. And there are babies that are in between, of course. Pause, pause, much shorter pauses. The longer the pause, the more milk the baby got. So we can do something about that. And so that's the most important thing. I think that if the mother is seeing the baby doing mostly this, she should see somebody who knows about breastfeeding immediately. And that does not mean the doctor. The doctor doesn't know. The doctor will weigh the baby and say, ah, it looks okay, that's fine. No, it's not okay. If the baby's doing just nibble, 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 it's not okay. So that's the first thing. Now, you mentioned about two or three months later, there's less milk. We see this a lot. And we see this a lot, which we call late onset decreasing milk supply. And there's a blog on that as well. Uh, and this late onset decreasing milk supply, interestingly enough, is the problem of the mother who starts off with a lot of milk. But for some reason, the mother's milk supply decreases. One thing that decreases the milk supply frequently is a tongue tie. Another thing that, that happens very frequently is the mother's told, you should breastfeed on just one breast at each feeding. That's mm -hmm. bad advice. Finish one side and then offer the other. That's easy. If the baby's not hungry, you won't take the second side. But don't limit it to one side. Many mothers are even being told, feed the baby three, four, five times on the same breast before you offer the other breast. Well, that's a good way to decrease the milk supply. And that's exactly what happens. The birth control pill, the doctors say, no, no, it doesn't affect the milk supply. Yeah, it does. Okay, so that's another reason that we see. And uh, basically, you know, those are the three major things that we see for a decrease after the first, when things are going well for a month or two, and then it does no longer going well. And the the, the, the problem with this late onset decreasing milk supply is that frequently the babies are still gaining weight well, but they're very unhappy babies often. They're crying all the time, they're pulling at the breast, they're sucking their fingers all the time, uh, and eventually they will stop gaining weight. And this triggers the mother to give formula because yes. she believes that the baby doesn't get, doesn't, it doesn't eat uh, enough. Yes, or the baby is diagnosed as having colic or uh, uh, reflux or allergy to something in the milk. Well, I don't believe that a baby who is exclusively breastfeeding gets, some, gets allergy to something in the milk or that, they don't have, or that they have reflux. I don't believe that's true. That's all from the formula companies with their special formulas for reflux and for uh, allergy to something in the milk. A mother who's been breastfeeding exclusively from birth does not give her baby cow milk protein in the milk. So that's not true, just not true. There's no evidence for this. And yet the formula companies have really pushed this. And a lot of pediatricians believe that's the cause of colic and reflux and all of that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Not true. That's very interesting because I was said so. <laughs> I know it's very, very common. 
<laughs> lots of women are said that and also we have anxious women who are told that it's not normal that the baby doesn't sleep at night uh, uh, at the age of five six seven months so they try to stop breastfeeding at night and they uh, often say that i have a problem with breastfeeding during the day that's without right the milk supply decreases yeah the milk supply decreases if you don't feed the baby at night it's not normal Yes, maybe formula fed babies do sleep longer. Okay, maybe that's a sort of an advantage, but it's not really an advantage. Uh, and uh, it's true that uh, trying to stop the baby from breastfeeding during the night is just going to cause many problems with breastfeeding. But let's say if somebody wants to stop breastfeeding at night, what is the minimum age for the baby when the mother can stop night feeding? This is a very frequent question for us. Uh, these babies will sleep, uh, will, uh, will uh, continue to wake up uh, for many months and even years. And I think that I know it sounds terrible, uh, but you know, it's okay. Sleep with your baby. Once you get used to it, the baby will start breastfeeding. You know, the mother is undressed from the waist up. The baby is just in a, in a nappy. The baby will take the breast. The mother won't even wake up. That's yeah, at some eventually age, how it happens. Sorry, yes, they, say, they say if my baby, uh, if I uh, night win my baby and she wakes up uh, at the age of six months, I will give her formula. But if it's uh, if she is two years old, uh, can I give her water? Well, what for? I think both are incorrect. And I think that uh, if the baby is waking up because they're hungry, which is unlikely, they wake up because, you know, it's, it's normal to wake up at they night. Mama. They need mama, right. And I mean, even <laughs> adults are afraid of the dark, no? Why should a baby not be afraid of the dark? Yes. I think that, and you know, get used to it. Yeah. Sorry? And yeah, yeah, get... grown-up kids, same. Sure, get used to it. They, 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 will, they will grow out of it eventually. Uh, it's, it's, it's hard to explain. It's hard for parents to believe this or to accept it, but it's much better because if you do night weaning, your baby will stop breastfeeding well and the milk supply will decrease. And why give the baby formula? You wanna give the baby something else. So give them, give them some food. What's so special about formula? You know, it's not that much easier. You got to prepare the bottle. Okay, prepare it's some. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you believe that uh, breastfed baby babies, exclusively breastfed babies, cannot have colics and reflux? I do, that's yes, I believe that. But it's uh, there's a proviso, and that means that the baby is getting enough. You know how many babies can uh, take uh, drugs for colics? Breastfed yes. baby lots. Yeah. Well, drugs. Right. I don't think we see that here very often, but yes, I know that in uh, in Eastern Europe and Southern Europe, uh, there are lots of medications that are given for uh, for babies, and uh, happily we don't see that so much, but I, we do see it. And but if you if you have a family who are struggling with some pains, evening pains, yeah, belly pains, what what do you advise them? I say case? this is not this. We have to fix the breastfeeding. Uh, mm -hmm. This is not caused by uh, exclusive breastfeeding. If the baby's getting enough, let's uh, see what we can do. Uh, sometimes these babies are, uh, are, are uh, in the, in, for example, in the late onset decreased milk supply, they often are getting enough to gain weight well, but they're not happy babies. And I don't believe that a, an exclusively breastfed baby who is gaining weight well, uh, I don't believe that they have colic. I don't think that they have stomach problems. I don't think they have... Uh, uh, gas, everybody calls gas a problem. It's not a problem. I mean, they, you know, a baby may fart a bit and uh, give out a little cry and then it's over. They don't care. What about the pain and the nipple and breast pain, mm -hmm. uh, which is not normal, as you say. Uh, but what's the, what are the main causes of such uh, problems with the often uh, problems that women have postpartum? Well, there's only one cause and that's a poor latch. Okay, but there are many causes of poor latch. Uh, uh, for example, that I come back to the tongue tie. Uh, that is really a very common problem. 
And doctors, again, if they don't believe, if they don't deal with breastfeeding mothers most of the time, they say, ah, there's no such thing. It's not a problem. Ah, you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, I think if the mother has a significant pain, at least look in the mouth and see if the baby's got a tongue tie. The problem is that most pediatricians or doctors don't know what a tongue tie looks like. I think that if the mother has pain, something is wrong. What can we fix? The latch. Okay. The tongue tie is one thing that causes a poor latch. The other thing is the swelling of the breasts because of all the IV fluids the mother got, right? So they get all these IV fluids and everybody tells them, oh, you've got flat nipples. That's why the baby doesn't latch on. Well. No, it doesn't matter if the mother has flat nipples. The baby should be able to latch on well. And I think that what we need is people who really understand breastfeeding, who are there in the first days after birth and saying, no, something is wrong. If you're in pain, let's fix it. Whereas most people will say in our, in, you know, in Toronto, they'll say, oh, it's normal to have sore nipples. It'll get better in two or three weeks. Well, Yes, that is actually true sometimes. And it's true because those mothers develop a good milk supply and a good milk supply encourages a better latch, but not always. And the problem is why should the mother suffer for two or three weeks? Of course. When it's not even true all the time that they'll get better. Jack, how long is it normal for the nipples to be actually you know, hurting and swollen like one, two days, Shouldn't week, be. week? Never, no, it should never be painful. Therefore, if it is painful, somebody should be helping the mother. Mm -hmm. It's not always easy. Don't, yeah. don't get me wrong. Sometimes mm -hmm. getting a good latch when the mother's nipples are swollen because of the IV fluids or because the baby has a tongue tie uh, is not so easy. I mean, releasing a tongue tie is very easy, and especially in the first day or two. You just give it a little push with your finger and it's done. It's mm -hmm. the end of it. It's so, it's so easy to, to release it. Once they get to us at four or five weeks, it's now much stronger, that tongue tie, and we have to use uh, uh, scissors. Mm -hmm. But in that first day or two, I did it with my granddaughter myself. She's just born, uh, oh, she'll be two uh, in a few days. Yeah. Uh, but when she was born, on day one, I saw she had a tongue tie. So I just got, pushed it, it was open, and finished, no more problem. Yes, but sometimes you see the tie, even the posterior tie, but then the pediatrician says that everything is fine. There is no okay. tie. <laughs> <laughs> well, that doesn't uh, take away from what I said right at the beginning, that pediatricians don't know anything about breastfeeding. The other, the other question that we have is about the nipple cream that you have, uh, and like universal nipple cream. And one of the um, parents asked us, uh, there is an antibiotic is, takes part in this cream. And is it actually safe for the child and for the stomach? That was the question. Yes, of course it's safe. I wouldn't prescribe it if it wasn't safe. <laughs> the antibiotic is, that's there is, uh, uh, is an antibiotic that is usually used uh, uh, topically. And it's very effective against uh, Staph aureus, Staphylococcus aureus. Uh, but it's not absorbed from the intestinal tract. So the baby just poops it out. But I think that, you know, it, yes, you can argue with a little change the flora of the gut, but so putting the baby on formula changed the, the, the flora of the baby's gut. And, you know, we don't take these sort of things into consideration and say, oh, you know, can't use this drug because it may change uh, this antibiotic, for example, that'll change the baby's uh, gut flora. But as I say, putting the baby on formula will also change the gut flora. It's only a problem when the mother's breastfeeding. And what are your best advices, most popular advices you give to working women, how to maintain the milk supply and how to make their life okay, happy, satisfied? Okay, well, you know, they can, uh, they can express their milk uh, and the milk can be given to the baby. But a baby who's already four months old, rather than giving that baby breast milk in a bottle or formula in a bottle, a baby of that age can start eating food. You know, I know it's not the recommendation of the World Health Organization uh, to start food before the age of six months. But this is in a situation where if you're going to start giving the baby bottles, you may be undermining the breastfeeding and that baby may not be breastfeeding by six months. And what is the problem with the bottle? I mean, well, pressing milk and giving the bottle. Well, the problem is that the baby won't take the breast after a while. So even if there's breast milk in the bottle, babies tend to prefer the bottle because the flow of milk is usually faster. Mm -hmm. They like the fast flow. Now, this doesn't happen to all mothers because many mothers are producing lots of milk. 
but if you're sort of on the just enough situation, your baby may start to refuse the breast and the breast is much, you know, it, it, you know, the flow is often slower than a bottle. And then you have the difficulty of the baby starting to prefer the bottle. And the real problem with that is that first of all, breast milk in a bottle is not breast milk from the breast. Mm -hmm. There's, there are studies now that show that the expressed milk is different. And in fact, there was a recent study from Winnipeg in Canada that showed that there were, that babies who were getting expressed milk in a bottle had a higher incidence of asthma than babies who were getting uh, breast directly, breast milk directly from the breast. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing that I think is even more important is that breastfeeding is more than just breast milk. It's a relationship. So a close, intimate, physical and emotional relationship between two people that can't be duplicated by the bottle. So, you know, we really need to avoid bottles unless it's absolutely necessary. I mean, some of our mothers uh, will give, uh, you know, they're driving along and the baby is in the back seat and there's no place quickly to stop and the baby's screaming. So here's, here's a bottle of uh, breast milk. Uh, or, or even formula to, to, to quiet them down. But I, I, you know, on our highways, there's always places you can stop. So you don't have to feed them immediately. And I'm just wondering about the mother driving and giving the bottle back with. So yes, yeah. Yes, you know, women, they leave their children with caregivers in the nurseries. And usually the personnel, they just refuse of, uh, you know, giving the cup or whatever, just give the bottle yep. quicker. We have the same problem here. We have the same problem here. They think it's, uh, uh, you know, it's easier. Uh, it's, uh, but they don't know. They, I mean, it's, they're, just, they're not properly trained. And, mm -hmm. you know, they presumably, if you work in such a situation, you are trained, you have, uh, I don't know, courses, maybe, I don't know, months long, or even a more longer than a few months, where they need to be teaching uh, these people how to feed a baby uh, with, uh, with a cup. But if the baby's already eating solids, then the milk can be mixed with the solids. There's no reason it has to be given, you know, directly. It can be just mixed with the uh, food. And many mothers are asking us about what is the ideal time for weaning a baby? What is the average weaning age? And when can we be okay to softly stop breastfeeding? I would recommend don't wean the baby. Let the baby stop when he's ready. There will become a time when... Uh, uh, when the baby does not want uh, the breast anymore. That's when, a, when is this time usually coming? Three to four years. Okay. This is average, yeah? That they will stop on their own, yes. It's a, it's a mutual thing. I, uh, I remember my third son, who was three and a bit. And uh, I have to say, my wife was, you know, uh, she had she'd already breastfed... Uh, 11 years, three children. Only? Yes. Not, not 11 years each baby, but 11 oh. years total. And, uh, you know, she was a bit tired of it. And I remember she was uh, breastfeeding him. Uh, and I was there in the room. And he said, uh, and she said, don't you think it's time you've had enough? None of your friends are still breastfeeding. And he said, he burst into tears. You know how when children that age burst into tears, like they shoot out the, the tears. Mm -hmm. And he said, not today, tomorrow. And tomorrow he stopped. Yeah. But you have this misconception in the society, especially originated by, lot, by, by women, that it's easier to win a baby before the age of one. Because then when they speak, they uh, refuse, they start to be very naughty about this. So what do you say to such mothers who believe that winning before one is easier? Well, it may be easier. But why do it? You know, you're, the, the, what you're doing for your child by breastfeeding longer than a year is, can't be measured. It's wonderful. It's great. We decrease uh, uh, hyperactivity in uh, children. It's like an epidemic these days. Every child seems to have hyperactivity. So there's a decrease. And, you know, like a lot of these mothers who have ADHD themselves are, are writing me and saying, 
you know, I'm, I'm going to be treated for my ADHD, but I'm still breastfeeding. Is it okay? I say, yes, because you decrease the risk of your baby having or your child having that. Mm -hmm. So it's not a guarantee. There's no guarantee for anything in the world, but uh, you know, you decrease the risk. Sure. Keep breastfeeding and take the medication. We have mothers who are very wor worried about teeth problems, about caries, about uh, any um, risks associated and benefits associated with uh, prolonged breastfeeding. Well, I wouldn't call it prolonged if it's uh, a year or two or three. Uh, if it's 12 years, yeah, that's a bit, that's long. <laughs> okay, so... This is based on the notion that a baby who is put to bed with a bottle of formula or even sugar water, which is done very commonly in certain uh, populations in North America, uh, they get caries here, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so the doctors and the dentists have said, well, you know, formula, just like breast milk and just like breastfeeding. So sugar. the babies will get uh, caries. It's not true because... The way a baby breastfeeds is not the same as the way a baby bottle feeds. Babies put to bed with a bottle will suck on that bottle for a long time. And the milk will bathe the teeth. Whereas I think you know, when a baby is breastfeeding, the nipple is at the back of the baby's mouth and the baby immediately swallows that milk. So it doesn't bathe the uh, teeth. Um, and the baby swallows it right away. And how long does a breastfeeding at night last? A few minutes, right? And the baby's back to sleep. The other thing is that there are some children that get the cavities, but we, have, we know that these cavities are often due to something, an, an infection, a fever that mothers had during the labor, uh, during, the, uh, uh, during the pregnancy. pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And it's a, a weakness in the uh, teeth but not due to breastfeeding, but due to something that occurred during the pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes drugs, sometimes uh, uh, an infection that caused the fever. We don't know for sure, but there's evidence for that. So I think that breastfeed your baby at night. Don't worry about it. It's a great way to put your baby to sleep. Mm -hmm. and a great way to put your baby to sleep is to sleep with your baby. Would you advise to families who decide to breastfeed to the fathers? What can, you do, what can they do? How can they contribute to the breastfeeding process and breastfeeding education and education of breastfed child and care? Okay, well, again, uh, to find out before the baby's born how you can help. And I think the, reason, the way you can help is to support the uh, mother and say, you know, you're doing the right thing. It's going well, or maybe it's not going well, but uh, let's get help uh, and get help early, waiting and waiting and waiting. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so discouraged sometimes when we see a mother who comes in with her baby who is two and a half months old and she's still having sore nipples and nobody's ever said, well, this is not, this should be fixed. The fathers need to know what normal is too. And they need to be there and say, you know, you're doing the right thing. You do. Let's let's see if we can get help. Or you're doing the right thing. And you don't need help. It's good. It's beautifully. Look at how well he's drinking. So all this information that we have for mothers on our website, it's there for the fathers too. And it's not always easy. But it's not always easy with formula-fed babies either, because formula-fed babies are the ones who do get colic. And you have a colicky baby. You know what 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 uh, does does that. Uh, Des, desespoir, uh, <laughs> uh, desperation is, mm -hmm. uh, you know the, how difficult it can be. Those are the problems with the formula fed babies. Nobody says uh, to those, uh, don't help, don't, uh, don't you know, help your, your, your spouse uh, uh, with uh, the problems. No, you're there, you're there to support the, the mother, to, to help, to support to encourage her that she's doing the right thing. But then you don't need to know that she is doing the right thing. In other words, that the baby is breastfeeding well. And that's why both parents you need to know. I think we have one last question regarding the COVID vaccine, if you, if you don't mind to call uh, it. Not at all. Uh, Jack, it's just a question. We know that um, the scientific answer, yeah, but then mothers are very afraid. Uh, and usually if they ask you, what do you answer? Should they be vaccinated or not? 100% yes. Absolutely. Okay. Not only are you protecting yourself, you're protecting the baby. The baby gets uh, uh, antibodies that the mother produces. There are several studies that are showing this. 
of course, you know, babies are not likely to get very sick with uh, COVID-19, uh, but they can pass it on. And uh, so can the mother, you know, I, I mean, I, I would not hesitate for one minute uh, to get the vaccine. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you very much.